It was totally unexpected. The boy at the rubber estate was walking to the tool shed when he fell over something. He got up and kicked at it, then realized what it was. He stared in horror at the dead body. He screamed and ran away. Azrin Saleh came out of the matron's office. She stopped at the front desk. Mr. Costa, please inform Mr. Goldman I won't be able to help out tonight. I'm flying back to Malaysia in an hour. All right. Have a safe journey, dear. Azrin went to her room and packed her bag. She took the stairs down because she did not want any of her friends to see her. On her way out, she saw her friend, Julian E. Azrin did not feel like explaining matters to him, so she hurried outside. However, Julian caught up with her. You're leaving? Have you finished your exams? No, but I have to go home. My sister has passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. Please send my condolences to your family. I will. Goodbye. Azrin was on the plane. She was served lunch, but she had no appetite for food. She began thinking of her sister, Madhuri, who was four years older than her and was pretty, polite, and obedient. Azrin, conversely, was short, wore spectacles, and always spoke her mind. Everyone preferred Madhuri. Oh, how Azrin had hated her sister. They used to have such fun when they were young, but those days were gone, and now Madhuri was dead. In a village on a small island near Langkawi. What's wrong, Ma? Puan Nomala is spreading rumors again. I saw Madhuri's body. It was horrible. And her blood. It was white. Do you hear me? Madhuri had white blood. We have been cursed. Meanwhile, Azrin had arrived at Langkawi Airport and was met by Datin Sharifa and Datuk Zukifi. Azrin! How are you, dear? How was the flight? Did you enjoy yourself? How did you like the food? Was it... Datin Sharifa talked non-stop in the car. However, as they neared the jetty, her chatter ceased. Across the waters, they saw a small island with green hills and village houses. It looked beautiful and peaceful, but Azri knew better. Behind those hills, there was a village that held secrets. Azreen arrived home. She passed a group of gossiping women in her living room who thought her rude for not greeting them and went straight inside. She went to see her mother who was suffering from Alzheimer's. Ma, why didn't Abba take you to the burial ground? Why should I go to the burial ground? What has happened? I don't want to go. But Azrin took her mother there. At the burial ground, Azrin's father, Saleh, scolded Azrin for bringing her mother along. Datin Sharifa quickly took Azrin's mother home while Azrin stayed back. She did not shed a single tear during the burial. Later, at home, Azrin was at her window when she caught a glimpse of a woman with long black hair. That looks like Madhuri, but it cannot be. Meanwhile, at the village headman Haji Ghani's house, his first wife, Puan Fatiha, was angry. How dared Madhuri enter our lives? She had no right! The next morning, Azrin met Muhammad Asraf, her school friend, outside the mosque. Please tell me what happened to Madhuri. No one wants to tell me anything. It seems her death was an accident. 
everything was cleared up quickly by Haji Ghani and his men. I don't know much. Azrin could not find out more information. That afternoon, she went into the jungle to meet an old friend, the old lady. Everyone in the village thought the old lady was an evil witch. It was said she could turn children into animals and eat them. Azrin had not believed a word of it and had made friends with her. So, you finally come to visit me. How are your parents doing? My mother doesn't know anything about Madhuri's death because of a disease. And my dad, well, he is not talking to me. Machi, please tell me about Madhuri's accident. Accident? Azrin, Madhuri was murdered. I was at the rubber estate that day. I saw Madhuri's body. She had a gash across the side. That kind of wound could only have been made by a blade. I didn't stay long because Haji Ghani and his men arrived. Meanwhile, at Haji Ghani's house, Puan Fatiha was thinking about the day her husband had laid eyes on Madhuri. Madhuri had been reciting a poem at an event when Haji Ghani had been attracted by her voice and had taken more notice of her. Soon thereafter, he had made the decision to marry her. Madhuri took everything away from me. It's time for me to take it back. At Azrin's house, Azrin was looking at Madhuri's photo album. Why are all these pictures torn? What are you doing here? Get out! Don't touch your sister's things. Haji Ghani was at the cemetery. As he was about to leave, he saw someone in a long white dress walking among the trees. It looked like Madhuri. Is that Madhuri? Suddenly, lightning flashed and the woman moved away. Back at Azrin's house, Azrin! Why didn't you latch the chicken coop? A chicken has been killed. But I did latch the coop. Don't lie. Now, clean up this mess. Azrin was confused, but she did as her father had said. The next day, Azrin received a letter from Julian. He had sent Madhuri's letter to Azrin. It had been written before she had died. Dear Ade. I hope you are well. Ma and Abba are doing fine at home. I have something to tell you, something I'm very happy about. Do come back soon, so I can share it with you. Love, your sister. Azrin crumpled the letter and threw it away. As she walked home, she changed her mind and went back to retrieve the letter. But she could not find it. Madhuri's letter was gone. It rained heavily for four whole days. On the fifth day, Azrin's mother passed away. Azrin and her father hardly cried because they knew she had gone to a better place. That night, Azrin entered Madhuri's room. As she was about to leave, she saw a face at the window. She ran out to look for the person, but saw no one. When she returned to the house, she saw Madhuri's room on fire. Get out! Quickly! Salis scraped wet soil from the ground and threw it over the fire until it went out. Azrin, tired and confused, could not sleep that night. The next day, Azrin went to the old lady's house and asked the old lady if she could spend the night there. The old lady allowed her to stay over while they were talking. Oh my goodness, Asraf's at the gate. Azrin brought him into the house. Asraf was a little afraid of the old lady because of the rumors he had heard about her, but he spoke to her nonetheless. My grandmother is very sick. There are no herbs to be bought at the market 
and I was told to come here. Please, help me. You should go and see his grandmother at the village. Then you'll know what's wrong with her. No, the villagers won't want me there. I'll take care of that. Just come and see my grandmother. All right. They went to Ashraf's house. The old lady prepared some tea and told Ashraf to feed his grandmother the tea every hour. The next morning... How is his grandmother? Much better. But I need some eggs. Can you get them from your house? Azrin went home to collect the eggs, but she rushed back to Ashraf's house when she was told a large crowd had gathered there. You! How dare you bring that witch back to this village? If she doesn't go back soon, someone will die, and you had better hope it isn't you. You're just a village gossip. The old lady means no harm. Go away! There were murmurs and noises from the crowd. Someone pushed Azrin down. However, Saleh appeared at that moment and broke up the fight. When everyone had left, Ashraf came out to speak to Azrin. My grandmother has recovered! Azrin went home knowing that Ashraf's grandmother would be alright. However, that night, a neighbor rushed to Azrin's house. Kak Azrin, Ashraf's grandmother has passed away and he's on his way to the old lady's house with a few men. The villagers have convinced him that the old lady poisoned his grandmother. What? Azrin ran as fast as she could to the old lady's house. She tried to stop Ashraf, but in the struggle, Ashraf's torch rolled towards the old lady's house and the house caught fire. In the burning house. Machi! We must leave! Now! My leg's stuck! <laughs> Leave me here! <laughs> you must get out! No! <laughs> Save yourself, Azrin! <laughs> and remember all that I've taught you! <laughs> no! The old lady died in the fire. Azrin, filled with sorrow and pain, ran to Asra's house and shouted at him for killing the old lady. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to burn down her house. I didn't know what I was thinking or doing after hearing Nick had died. It's too much for me. First Maduri, and now Nick. Azrin, I loved Maduri. We were supposed to run away together, but she died before we could do it. Azrin was so shocked to hear Ashraf had loved her sister that she ran away. The next day, Azrin met the village Bomo, Awang, who had more shocking news for her. Che Ade, Maduri was not your sister. She was adopted by your parents. They found her at the paddy fields. Her real mother did not go looking for her when your parents took her away. But now, after her death, her real mother has returned. She's the one people have been seeing round the village and assuming it's Maduri's ghost. Haji Ghani kept her murder a secret, didn't he? He must have found out about Maduri and Ashraf. At home, Azrin kept thinking about what she had just heard. Standing at her window, she saw a woman behind the trees. The woman came slowly towards the house and pointed at a pile of wood. What's going on? Abba, there's someone outside. They went out but saw no one. Saleh bent down near the pile of wood and removed his para. Then, he threw it near Azrin's feet. The parang was stained with latex. The woman was pointing at the parang. The latex. Juan Nomala said Maduri had white blood. Abba, 
You killed Maduri. Maduri, who's that man with you? He's not your husband. I will kill him. No, Abba. I love him. I do. Ungrateful child. Azri, realizing the truth, ran away from her father. She did not see the woman walking towards her house, towards her father. Saleh saw the woman. Maduri? But Saleh knew it was not Maduri. Then, he saw the parang in the woman's hand. Saleh was terrified. He collapsed. Azrin visited the graves of her family and the old lady before she left for London. She left a flower for each of them and bade them goodbye. As she walked towards the jetty, Azrin thought she saw a woman standing beside a tree. The woman smiled. A smile that was exactly like Maduri's. Then, the woman disappeared. Azrin returned to London. She returned to the beginning of her new life.